you know guys we were told by dbas for the longest time to exercise caution when executing certain workloads to the database you know because we can get into a situation where your query is using an index that is fragmented and uh, this might be a confusing term it was a confusing term for me for the longest time and uh, this index fragmentation is caused by uh, something called page splits which kind of degrade the performance of the index but really nobody told us why it is slow you know so i'd like to i like to talk about uh these building blocks respectively what's what is a page and why split why do we even need to split a page why do we get to this situation where we need to split a page i mean if you're adding data just keep creating new pages why do you go to an existing a page and split it and some of you might have says well that kind of makes sense we'll come to that right and uh, some of you is like well, yeah i don't understand why do we need to split pages it's, it's, it's fa fascinating when you actually understand what we're doing it's all for a good reason so i'm going to talk about that i'm going to talk about what is a page what is a page split how does an index get fragmented and what is the cost what does this cost me as an engineer when it comes to execution time and is it really a big deal how about we jump into it and discuss welcome to the back engineering show with your host hussein nasr and today's topic is page splits we really need to talk about what a page is i, I talked about this many times in the youtube channel but in, in, and in my courses as well you see when the the way the hard drives on disk and ssd are built is built around something called blocks right everything is a block storage so when you actually issue an io to the ssd or to the hard drives you don't get a single byte you know you, you don't get to choose the minimum amount of things you want to read you get a fixed amount of size you can get multiple of that size you know like 4kb and then 8 16 and whatever but you don't get to choose like a lower amount so you don't get this granularity as you do with uh, random access based memory such as ram right you don't get to say oh go to this address and that's a big old of one and read that byte yeah uh you, 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 ssd is kind of big off one you go to that location but you don't fetch one byte you get you get more and, and this is kind of a double-edged sword when you read you get more and that also applies to writing when you write you gotta write in blocks so it's like wait a minute i i don't really i just changed one byte you want me to write 4k it's expensive especially when it, when it comes to ssds normally really much uh, when it comes to hard drive but ssds uh, writing to the same place over and over again uh that particular minimum small location gets you know get exhausted after a while uh, from the arrays and program cycles because you you in order to write to the ssd you have to erase that portion you know so ssd comes up with all these tricks on the background which adds more abstraction leaky abstraction to us you know as engineers we don't know what this SSD is doing you know shuffles things around and the part of the shuffling and garbage collection and where leveling that is does these algorithms we feel the right amplification performance as a result but that's that's what we get we get a page right we get to work with pages and pages is really a database logical abstraction you know I have a page and this is i don't know 8k for example in postgres and 16k in anodb mysql and that's that's a page that's how i work that's that's the amount i work with it's 16 or 4k but doesn't really translate uh perfectly when it comes to the ssd it's it there is a big mismatch because one page in postgres could be two pages or blocks in the ssd and this mismatch causes multiple ios 
right? And if you're really unlucky, one page that has your beautiful index keys or your rows, you know, your actual rows and columns might live on different physical pages in the SSDs. And that's based on how you write things. So we have this idea of pages. So just, just look at the concept of a page itself. And that's what we have today. Okay. So the database is always read a page and then caches it into what is called a buffer pool. You know, it has many names, buffer share pool, you know, shared memory, whatever, you know, it's just a location in the, that the database reserve from memory and puts it in reserves it. So, hey, I'm going to use this for my pages that I read. And when you write to this page, you know, let's change one row, you write to that cache location. It's almost like a write through cache. Well, you might say, Hussein, what are you talking about? Databases writing to the cache? Uh, we, we, I thought databases are durable. Well, that's a long story to talk about because you can, let's assume we're going to do exactly what you're thinking. If I change, if one transaction changed the row that happened to be in this page and then transaction two changed the, some other row in the same page, and transaction three changed another row. If those were three IOs, because again, remember, we can we get only to flush the whole thing. We don't get to write a byte and when it comes to databases, right? So that means I just wrote 8K and then another 8K and then another 8K worth of almost identical information with a little bit of tiny things that changed, right? So why is it bad? First, it's bad because you got three IOs. So that's three amount of slow time that you got response time wise. The second thing is the work that the SSD is doing, because let's say we're working always with SSDs. Each write, you're writing to the same page. So physically, the, the logical blocks are mapped to the same physical blocks in the SSD. And when you write to it, well, the SSD says, okay, this block is taken, right? Let me allocate a new block for you and write your stuff. And then you came up with the same, and then you came up with the same writes to the same page. But now, wait a second, this block is now used. Let me allocate a new block for you and then write to that. So now you, you're leaving your dirty trace, you know, in the SSD, which the SSD needs to come back and do this garbage collection to clean up these physical location and update these mappings that it does. So there is a lot of work that we do. So what is the, what is the solution to this? So how do we solve this? We do something called batching, very popular uh, concept in computer science. It says, hey, you issued a write, right? Let's wait a little bit. Let's just buffer these writes a little bit. Oh, you touched row one, you touched row two, you touched row three. I'm going to write all of them into the cache and then flush all of these once. So we got beautiful single change in SSD speak, it's a single write, but we actually successfully wrote three transaction worth of changes. Beautiful stuff. But some of you are already yelling at me, saying that's not durable. Yeah, because if writing to the cache and I crashed my database, I lost my changes. That's why there's another thing that people have invented called uh, the wall. Write ahead log or uh, another fancy name for it, it's called the redo log, you know? And this is an append only 
traces of uh, the changes that committed transactions made. Okay, so we don't touch the physical data file pages, you know, the rows and the indexes. We don't touch them. We touch them in the cache. So future transactions can read from the cache, but we record the changes and those changes are tiny, tiny. And we also do some sort of a magical buffering for these wall changes. We call them the wall changes or, or the right ahead log changes. And then we flush them. And because these are not uh, updates, these are writes. You insert them. So we merge and then we, at the end, we, we write to a new page. And when we write, it says, do you love this stuff? Oh, you, you want to write to a new location? I love you. This is a new location. Here, go write it. We're not going to an existing page and says, ah, this, there is some garbage here. Okay, let me copy that stuff and let me create, erase this page and then look at a new location for you. And then let's remap the LBA, the logical block address to this physical block address and do the mapping and update the DRAM and the SSD. There is a lot of work that we do on the background. And, and this gets worse and worse the more garbage you collect. And by garbage, I mean the, these uh, stale SSD pages, effectively. All right. So the wall saved us here. But now, okay, Hussein, eventually we flush the pages and now we have a beautiful page. Okay. Now, let's come to the performance problem that we have. Uh, when it comes to reading and, and writing to the pages. First of all, let's identify the difference between the different pages. A page is a page. It's just 8K or 16K based on the database configuration. You can change that, by the way, as a DBA. A page is a page. But where this, what this page represents is actually critical. Does this page represent a table that has absolutely no order? Let's say you created a table, not in, not in MySQL, because MySQL is always ordered by default. Let's say it's in Postgres, right? When you create a table in Postgres, there is no concept of a primary key when it comes to clustering, because usually primary key is, is uh, clustering, you know, it clusters the table around the primary key index so that the table rows are ordered based on that. What does that mean? That means if, if you create a table in Postgres and you insert a row, that row goes in the first location. And if you insert another row, it goes to the second location. If you insert another row, it goes to the third location. So let's say you inserted row seven, and then row three, and then row five, and then row zero, and then row 100. These are not ordered, and they don't have to be. And when you insert them, they just keep appending in the same table. So they might fit one page or two pages, depending on the sizes. But the order is not enforced. That's what I want to talk about here. There is no order when it comes to tables in Postgres. But indexes, on the other hand, are called indexes because they are ordered. What does that mean? This is a long topic. Indexes construct, con construct of something called the B3 data structure. I talked about that in a member-only video. If you want to learn more about the B3, and it's also... Uh, I talk about it in details in my fundamental to database engineering uh, course. I talk about B3 is not, not the fancy computer science world, but actually in real work, you know, in real world, how do you apply your BD, B3 understanding in your, in your real world database work effectively. But long story short the b3 is really this data structure that allow you to search uh, for a specific key right and then when you find that key the beauty is you found a key let's say you found key you're, you're indexing on an integer field and that's that integer field is is ordered of course because it's in the index so you get one two three four five and let's say you search for seven if you found seven, you found eight, nine, ten, and you also found uh, six, five, four, three, because everything is ordered. Okay, 
it depends on what is, is currently indexed. So now, now let's take a page that actually belongs to an index, a leaf index page. So if I inserted row seven and then followed by row one, oh, the index is going to do the magic and find the page exactly where one should belong. And let's say it's an empty. So one comes before seven. So it will actually or insert the one and then followed by the seven. And then if I insert two, it will, hey, one and seven. All right, nice. Let's just stick one and two and then seven. So it will rewrite the page. And since there is still free space left in the page, it can easily do this nice arrangement and then rewrite the same page effectively, right? So, so it it does effectively do this. So it's it's literally it sticks the entry in between the page itself, right? It's not inserting at the end, right? So now you you're gonna do this one, two, three, and then you start inserting until you will run into a situation where you have a a page that is filled, completely filled, but you need to insert a value in the middle of the page. Why? Because there is a gap. Gaps exist if you if you don't insert things in order, especially if you if you use like an index on a GUID or a UUID, right? These are random. These are the worst thing to index on, to be honest, because the uh, uh, you will there is no nice order to them right i believe the new version of uid whatever five or six they are considering doing them in an ordered fashion but as of now they are unordered so if they are unordered you will see a lot of these uh, find which page this belongs to and then insert it in the middle and then find it and then insert it in the middle all right so you you go into the situation until you will get a page that is filled with beautiful ordered content let's say we have i don't know from one to ten right so one two three one two three there is no value four so nobody answered it but there's for uh five six seven eight nine ten so value four is missing so right it doesn't have to be there right so now i'm going to insert the value four well it's index so i have to insert it right after the three because that's how index works right that's how ordered pages work now when you actually do that there is no space what do you do you gotta split the page one two three becomes another page and then oh uh now we have plenty of space because it's a brand new page. Insert the uh, four, and then let's insert the five, six, seven, eight, and then whatever remains, let's say eight and nine and 10 goes into the new page. So now you get another page that is full and the new page that is effectively empty. But not all the databases do it this way, right? So it's like, okay, oh, some databases will say, well, I don't want to do this page split so often because what happened if you insert, I don't know, let's say this is actually double. So I'm going to insert another value that happens to be here in this full page. Now, it's, it's, it becomes really a big problem, right? You, you'll end up splitting and splitting again. So some databases will split the page and leave plenty of space in both of them, actually right so we'll insert them now what is the problem with that now instead of one page you got two pages so in order to read the index in order to scan the index to look for a specific value previously you had to scan one page now you had to scan two so that's two IO, two logical IO when it comes to databases. But to this is these way more than two IOs, obviously, right? I always talked about how IO is very overloaded. You know, to us, a logical IO in the database, say, oh, I want to read one page one and page two. That's two 
logical read, you know, and also logical reads also means you're reading from the cache. But when you actually issue to IO, even physical IO, when, when it comes to database speak, that effectively doesn't translate to two SSD IOs, right? You might need to read multiple blocks in multiple locations. The, the SSD might need to do some shuffling to get you the data. So there is a lot more work. And as a result, you get into this fragmentation of indexes. And I give you a very simple example here. Right? So imagine you're churning content you're adding new content that are not ordered by default but because it's not ordered the way you're inserting it is not ordered then the index has to reshuffle and reorder because it cannot see the future right so we'll just insert values and insert values and then oh we need to split the page split the page split the page so you'll end up splitting many 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 pages and at the end of the day you get a lot of index pages that are that has a lot of empty spaces and you will find yourself reading multiple pages just to get to the results that you want and the larger the data the slower it will get effectively it's fascinating when you think about all that stuff that's why there is a configuration in every database it's called the fill factor fill factor uh it's called a page fill factor it says hey when you're inserting this stuff when you're inserting brand new stuff you know the the page fill factor is 75 percent fill the page up until 75 percent and leave this 25 percent for emergency cases where you had to split for example or in case of postgres there is this hot optimization heap only tuple optimizations that oh in that particular case uh, let's use this 25 percent so this space is left for dire circumstances to avoid these effectively page splits but obviously the 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 smaller the fill factor you're gonna get into the same problem you're gonna get into uh, index fragmentation again <laughs> right so you have to be, be careful with the how small or how big your fill factor is 80 percent, i think it's a recommended one but again it depends on your use cases and stuff like that but yeah uh, when you think about how how much work we're doing you know it's just fascinating how do you solve this the index fragmentation now usually dropping and recreating the index will solve it because now that we know all the content we know nothing is going to get inserted after that we have a fragmented index let's drop and recreate the index with a hundred percent fill factor if you know that this is going to be a read only definitely 100 percent. there is no point as far as i know to make it less than that because hey you're not going to receive new rights and uh, i think uh, another thing i forgot to mention is, is uh, about mysql mysql is designed this way so the primary key that you pick for mysql can really uh, make or break your architecture when it comes to data modeling you know picking you uid is usually a bad idea you know not only it just thrashes memory pages when you insert new random uuids because let's be honest the chances that you're gonna hit your new id hits a page that happens to be cached is almost nil you know it's not like you're inserting one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's like oh 11 if you're inserting 11 oh 11 is actually supposed to fit in this page which has the last entry which is 10 and the database does this calculation really easily right so that page is most of the time is cached because someone just touched it effectively in the buffer pool so if you think about it 
you really need to understand what is going on behind the scenes in order to build effective backend applications. And uh, don't come at me with, oh, NoSQL doesn't have all this problem, I'm going to just use NoSQL. You just, you, you'll basically, uh, you're closing your eyes effectively because these problems exist in every database. NoSQL just happened to abstract it away from you, right? It still exists and I believe MongoDB is adding these options for you know uh, for engineers because at the end of the day it's like all these databases no matter what the flavor they gotta abide by the fundamentals the SSD is a block storage you gotta do block storage you know you gotta have a file system with the, gonna be at the mercy of a file system which is another abstraction that's why some databases I believe try to skip the operating system to skip this file system mumbo jumbo and just immediately goes to talk to the ssd uh, nvme uh i don't know if you know this nvme is this spec that is uh that sits on top of the ssd the spec comes up com came, they came up with a new architecture command set called the key value which gives you just a very simple no blocks you know key value hey I want go to this key and I want this value and the and the va and the value could be variable. I don't know what's the smallest size to be honest, but uh, probably the smallest size is the page size, right? It can do, it can go lower than that. This is just the limitation of the SSD, but I might be wrong there. But yeah, going directly, if you really understand how to talk to the SSD, you can skip the whole operating system, right? And databases mostly do that today anyway, right? Like uh, most databases, when you issue, most application, when you issue a write to the operating system, it doesn't really write to disk, you know? The operating system writes it into its file system cache. Uh, the, same, the same reason why we have logical writes in the databases, we write it to the cache so we can batch, right? Same thing the operating system does. Uh, that doesn't fly with databases because databases want to be durable. They don't trust the OS. They want to write directly to the disk. And when you do that, uh, you get uh, you get into problems, right? You, your OS might crash and we might lose the data. We don't we can't afford that. Especially the wall changes. Right? Uh, the other kind of writes, eh, it can it can go directly to the cache, the OS cache. But if you're doing like a wall changes, flush, F sync, which is the this synchronous writes to disk, must skip the cache. That's why there's this variable called O direct that uh, I believe it's called O direct that just skips all this thing and write to disk. I think I threw a lot of information. This is uh, this is a very chunky and uh, you know. There's a lot of, uh, this episode has been, uh, I think it's not one of my best. I need to get better at summarizing things and just stick to the topic. But I think, I don't know. I think everything was related when I discussed. Might be wrong. Obviously, you got a shit. Uh, <laughs> some, some, of them, some of these are a mess. Some of these are a hit. At the end of the day, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode of the page splits. So as a summary, so we, we, can, we can just summarize this thing. A page, a database logical page is just a bunch of bytes that are grouped together and they're fixed size, mostly, right? And this is the unit that the database uses to read and write. We only read in pages, we write in pages. That's what we do. A page represent, can represent the heap table itself, which is a bunch of rows or columns in case of a column store. And, or it could also represent the index. If you have an index, these index are ordered, right? These index leaf pages effectively are ordered. And this is where it gets tricky. Anything in the word which uh, need to enforce ordering within a page that indicates that if you have certain values, you need to jump into the middle of the page and insert that value in that particular order. Because otherwise the index is useless, right? You, you got to eff effectively guarantee the order, the order of the physical location of the rows or the keys. 
and that's the main problem when it comes to uh, uh, page splitting, that's main cause, let's say. So if I want to insert something in the middle in a page that happened to be full, then I can't, right? Because the page is full. So we end up splitting the page and putting this content on two pages, right? Now we have free, free space on both pages. We're going to insert the row, the new row in the appropriate page. This leaves us with a, a lot of big spaces effectively in the page, right? And as a result, when we issue an IO, we got to read two pages to get the full picture instead of one previously, right? And uh, that is the main problem. Indexes become fragmented. The more Imagine doing this over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? With many, many indexes, <laughs> the pages that are fragmented. Then you get into this situation where... Uh, where index scans in particular becomes really slow, all right? So that's that's a summary of the episode. Obviously, I could have done this in one minute, but what's the fun? We're gonna talk about everything here. That's what we do on the Back Engineering Show. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'm gonna see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.